HMO or SA, serviced accommodation. Which one's the best, which one's got the edge, and which one should you be doing right now? I'm Simon, and three years ago, I decided to make a change. I was sick of being in the rat race, doing things that I didn't necessarily want to do. And most importantly, not having the financial independence to live the life I wanted to live and to look after my people. I got into property and it's been a game changer. I've got two seven-figure property businesses. I've got um, a seven-figure portfolio and I've also got a seven-figure rent-to-rent business, uh, also known as a property management business. And on today's video, I want to tackle a question you always ask me, HMO or SA, which one's the best? Which one should you be doing? If you're brand new to the channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button to get content every single week and hit the bell so you get notifications every time a new video drops. So before we get into it, if you're brand new, if you're a newbie, what on earth am I talking about? A HMO is just essentially a house share. So you get a whole house, whether you purchase or you rent to rent it, and rather than renting out the whole property, you split it up into rooms and you rent it out on a room by room basis. Great thing about this is naturally it allows you to be able to maximize the income from the property. Serviced accommodation is similar. Doesn't matter whether you're buying it or you're rent to renting it, you're maximizing the cash flow by renting the property out on a night by night basis. So instead of you being able to charge maybe 800 pounds per month on a single let, you might charge 100 pounds per night three grand. So both of these super strategies are ways of maximizing the cash flow. And in today's video, I want to put them head to head. Which one's best? Which one do I prefer? Because I do both and I'm going to share all. So the best way to do this is I'm going to measure these two power strategies through five key performance indicators. Number one, cash flow. Number two, management Number three, the scalability. Number four, the initial investment you're gonna need. And number five, the risk, because nobody wants to be too risky. So first things first, cash flow. I'll be honest with you, serviced accommodation has the ability to cash flow at higher levels. And the reason is because you're able to charge such a premium because you're offering fully serviced accommodation and you're, you know, you're getting nightly rates on a three, four bed, you might get as much as 150 down south, 250, 300. I've actually seen people get 400 pounds a night for luxurious serviced accommodation units. So in terms of big lumps of cash flow and the potential to get maximum cash flow, SA, you can't beat it. The downside of SA is you don't know your occupancy rates, okay? So it's hard to, to predict your exact monthly cash flow. Whereas on HMO, once you've got the tenants in, let's say you've got a five bed HMO and you sign five tenants up for a year, you know roughly, oh, that's a grand a month cash flow. And then all you've got to do is manage it, but you know it's coming. So the HMO cash flow will be less, but it will be more consistent. Number two, is management. And this is a tricky one. When I think about management issues I've, I've had with HMO tenants, it's like, you know, because it's their primary residence, they want their stuff to be nice, they want things to be on point. The properties tend to get a bit more wear and tear because you've got multiple people living in the property, using the facilities all the time, and you know, when issues come up, they're gonna be on you for you to sort them out, okay? Maintenance issues, I find wear and tear, like I said, is a bit more on HMO, it is a bit more, and sometimes what can happen is you will not go into a property for a few weeks or six weeks or two months, and then you'll look up and you'll see, ah, oh, there's a leak, cheers for telling me. Uh, whereas with SA, because you're doing more frequent turn turnarounds, actually, the wear and tear, you can spot things more instantly. SA, the hardest thing about the management with SA is the check-ins, the check-outs, and the cleaning. The cleaning is a killer. 
I've been through about five cleaning firms. Um, you know, I've had like stern words with cleaners. We've had situations whereby cleaners have done a beautiful job, but they've checked, they forgot to check in a drawer and then there's been something hiding in the drawer that you don't want to see when you're about to check into your accommodation. So I feel like SA, you have to systemize the management, but because you are in and out more often and you're doing more cleans, the wear and tear can be better. What I would strongly advise if you're in SA is make sure that from day one, you systemize, you've got a check-in, check-out, T's and C's, you make sure you take the necessary documents just to cover yourself. Number three, scalability. And this is more directed for you rent to renters out there, okay? It is far easier to source SAs than it is HMO. And the simple reality of that is because SAs, you can have one beds, two beds, three beds, four beds, five beds. They can be in an Article 4 area. All that means is if the council clamp down and say no more HMOs, you can still acquire SAs in that area. So there's less barriers to entry. There's more of a pool of properties to choose from. So I found it easier to scale through service accommodation. HMOs, bit tougher to scale in terms of the stock, but once you've acquired the property and you've put it to bed for six months or a year with tenants, you, you're then free to crack on. You know, I know people that are trying to set up three, four units at once, uh, SAs, and it makes it hard to move on because you need to get them going first. Number four, initial investment. Now, with HMOs, you're going to have more health and safety and regulation stuff you need to sort out, fire doors, interlink smoke alarms, and you might even have to pay for a license depending on your area. So the initial investment in terms of health and safety is higher for HMO. At the moment, by the way, service accommodation is becoming such a popular strategy that I think they will start to clamp down and new legislation will come up in SA, so mind out for that. But as of today, HMO, more hoops to jump from and higher investment to set the property up like that. But SA, you're gonna have to do the bedding, the towels, the amenities, the little ornaments, the plants, all the cutlery, you know, everything. So the investment in terms of the dressing of the property and the setting up of it in that way is higher. So, you know, they probably even themselves out naturally. If you're trying to set up a one or two bed SA, that's going to be cheaper than a seven or eight bed HMO. That goes without saying. And last but not least, risk. Which one's most risky? I think they both can be risky. They both can be risky if you don't choose right. So whether you're doing HMO or SA, please make sure that you choose an area where you've done the due diligence and research to make sure that there is a demand. Um, and I've got a podcast on this, the eight key considerations of how to research an area for HMO or SA, um, which would apply for rent to rent or purchases. I'll put the link to that in the description of this video. Got to pick your area right. Also, what you need to do is you need to get your pricing right. Because if your pricing's wrong and you know, you've got an essay that's empty for a few weeks, you're going to start losing money. It's as simple as that. Um, but the holy grail is, and if you've been following me for a while, don't rely on one. That's the key. I do both. And if you diversify, you're going to deleverage your risk. And it's going to mean that, hey, if I've got an essay empty for two weeks, the HMO pays me. Okay, and if I've got a few empty rooms and I've got a big chunky SA booking, that can subsidize the HMO income. So HMO or SA, which one's the best? It's tough. I personally love both. I think you need to do both, especially if you're doing rent to rent. Hope you find this useful. See you in the next video.